This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. How are you doing, you wonderful nerd? A lot of you out there probably have a sweet comic book collection, but I'd wager it would look a little bit nicer with this bad boy. Action Comics number one is the single most valuable comic book in history. In 2014, a copy sold for over three million dollars. Its value is not just based on the immeasurable effect that it had and continues to have on the world, but also because there aren't many copies left. Wartime efforts to recycle paper, sometimes printed in the comics themselves, means that it's incredibly difficult to find comic books from the golden age of the 30s and 40s, especially one in pristine condition. And that is made even harder for Superman because the publishers ran a contest that effectively asked readers to destroy their copy of Action Comics number one. And the sad news is, we have a record of people who did exactly that. As we recover from my emoji video that everyone seemed to boycott, let's go back to our roots today with the very first appearance of the Man of Steel himself that jump-started the superhero boom. Superman's creators, Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster, claim it took them six years to sell their story, which was originally conceived as a newspaper comic strip. They cut the strip up into a format that would fit the dimensions of a comic book and lifted a panel from the story to use as the last-minute cover of Action Comics. You can probably see the cover of Super Superman's first appearance in your mind's eye, or whatever. That jaw-dropping image of Superman effortlessly lifting a car over his head while some stereotypical 1930s goons cower in fear. The cover was seen as so outlandish at the time that the publisher reportedly banned Superman from appearing on any new covers of Action Comics, which is why the next few issues feature characters from other stories inside the anthology title. After the initial print run of 200,000 books sold out in record time, it wasn't long before National Allied Publications, the company behind Action Comics, realized it was because of the popularity of their Superman stories. Wanting to capitalize on this, the champion of the oppressed quickly returned to making appearances on the cover page. Action Comics number one launched a lot more than just the cape-wearing Kryptonian into the public eye. It popularized superhero comics for decades to come. As author Mike Benton so eloquently wrote in Superhero Comics of the Golden Age, quote, for for a while, Siegel & Schuster's tiny art studio at 10905 Amor Avenue was the only place in the world where stories about superheroes were dreamed, written, and drawn. But not for long. End quote. Action Comics number one is the grandfather of comic books, the one that started it all. But before that, it was simply yet another comic book that National Allied Publications had to advertise to make sure it sold well. And thus, we get this promotional image printed in More Fun Comics number 31, regarded as the first published picture of Superman in history. With the word out about this new comic title, new fans were ready and waiting to stake their claim as the first nerds to get involved in what would soon become an enormous superhero explosion. In the decades after, many readers could show their nerdiness by writing into a letters column. That's been pretty standard fare throughout the industry. But Action did not have a letters page. It did, however, have another way fans could get involved. Superman's big debut had a color page contest that looked like this. Readers could color in a black and white page from the Chuck Dawson story, which also appeared in Action Comics number one. Once readers had colored it in to the best of their ability, they would have to rip out the page from the comic and mail it to the publisher. Let me restate that. These readers not only took crayons to what would eventually become the most valuable comic book in history, but they ripped out a page from it. And here's the kicker. Here is the part of the story that might make some of you cringe. That first page of the Chuck Dawson story that fans tore out of the book? Well, the flip side of that page wasn't just some random, unimportant filler. If it was, we could forgive them, because at least they left the Man of Steel alone. But they didn't. On the reverse side of Chuck Dawson was the last page of the world's first Superman story. The truth is, 
We don't know how many readers went through with this, but we do know that 25 winners were chosen. And normally I'd be against this sort of nerd shaming, but these people are almost certainly dead by now, so here are their names real quickly. They each destroyed their own piece of history, a story worth potentially millions of dollars for a grand prize of exactly one dollar. Which, to be fair, is more like 17 when you adjust for inflation today. Still, that's a much better takeaway than all of the unnamed nerds who colored in and ripped up their copies of Action Comics number one for nothing. And look, obviously I kid about shaming these people, but the fact is that they sacrificed their priceless Superman comic for something I'm sure a lot of us would love to have. Historical records that they were the original comic book nerds. And in case you were wondering, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace makes it incredibly simple to create beautiful websites with their all-in-one platform. There's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. They recently launched 16 new templates to make creating your powerful online identity even easier. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and go to squarespace.com slash nerdsync to get 10% off of your first purchase. I've started working on a NerdSync website using Squarespace, and I am excited about getting that out for you guys. We'll check in on the progress of that in the coming weeks. Thanks so much for watching, especially if you are here from the Super Carlin Bros collab. Those guys are super awesome. It was a ton of fun to work with them. And if you haven't seen that video, there's probably a link on screen or in the description somewhere to go check it out. Here are some other videos that YouTube thinks you'll like. And while you look those over, I would love to thank our patrons, especially Christopher Lang, Mike Harville, Kendra, Elizabeth Monsell, and the rest of the wonderful nerds who support us over on patreon.com slash nerdsync. Click on one of these videos. And until next time, my name is Scott, reminding you to read between the panels and grow smarter through comics. See ya.